I'm George Galloway, Member of Parliament and anti-war campaigner. And this broadcast is made by Malacca Media. But you could feed back to me on it via Twitter at George Galloway or on Facebook at George Galloway MP. I want to talk to you today about the situation in Egypt, where over a year ago, a military junta led by General Sisi seized power from the elected Muslim Brotherhood government led by President Morsi and has been bathing the country in blood ever since. I had been banned from Egypt under the previous dictatorship of Hosni Mubarak in a vindictive act provoked by my repeated breaking of the siege on Gaza, bringing convoys from all over the world. After the Egyptian revolution, which overthrew Mubarak, I returned to the country, in fact several times, including to campaign in the first free presidential election, not for President Morsi, but for one of his rivals. Naturally, of course, in the final ballot, I supported President Morsi against his opponent, a remnant of the Mubarak regime. I believe that President Morsi made mistakes during his short one-year tenure as Egypt's leader, though these mistakes have been exaggerated, often grossly. I also believe that he remains the legitimate president of Egypt and that his usurpers have no legal or political legitimacy. Mubarak is now out of prison, whilst President Morsi and tens of thousands of others are behind bars. The remnants of the old regime are back with a vengeance. The military junta, which is what it remains, despite the general appearing nowadays in a lounge suit, has systematically reversed the gains of the revolution and ruthlessly repressed not just the supporters of the legal legitimate president, but even those who misguidedly supported the military coup. Now, Islamists, leftists, liberals, Arab nationalists, human rights campaigners fill the prisons together and the torture chambers, even the graveyards. The luckier ones have merely been internally banished to the rank of non-persons. The grim prison state that is now General Sisi's Egypt is worse, much worse than the dictatorship of Hosni Mubarak. And that's saying something. With remarkable smoothness, the so-called international community has pretended that none of this ever really happened. Those who are forever telling us how much they believe in democracy have nothing to say about the overthrow of democracy in Egypt and after just one year. Those who endlessly lecture the world on human rights have lost their tongues at the wholesale mass imprisonment of human rights campaigners, at the widespread use of torture, at the mass death sentences being handed out after farcical trials, sometimes lasting just a few hours. And those who are ready to go to war when governments gun down their own people have forgotten if they even noticed the massacre of Rabah in which thousands of civilian protesters were shot down like fish in a barrel, trapped in a square and slaughtered. Those who mournfully commemorate Tiananmen Square can't even bother to pronounce Rabah and don't even pretend to care about it. All television stations, radio stations, opposition newspapers, dissident journalists, non-government organizations who ask awkward questions, who refuse to toe the line, have been closed down, banned, banished, exiled, and countless numbers of them killed, tortured, thrown into grim dungeons. CC now leads one of the most ruthless dictatorships in the world, but you would never know it if your information came only from the so-called mainstream media. The other Arab dictatorships, particularly Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, themselves terrified at the prospect of democracy in their own countries, are pouring in billions of dollars to the coffers of the Egyptian junta, most of it, as usual, being snaffled by the army. The army has been restored to its former inglorious role of owning banks, hotels, shops, factories, farms. Sisi, hailed by some misguided people 
who hopefully now know better as the new NASA has turned out to be just another tin pot military ruler faithfully carrying out the orders of Israel and the United States. The siege of Gaza has been intensified by Sisi, tunnels destroyed, the gates of Rafah locked fast. Close coordination between the junta and the Zionist state has resumed with full force. The Muslim Brotherhood, which for decades endured brute tyranny without resort to violence and which so recently won the free elections in Egypt, have now been pronounced a terrorist organization and wiped off the official political map of Egypt. Egypt matters. It is the heart of the Arab world, the most important Arab country. Democracy matters. If the message to the Arab world is that democracy is too good for them, that they can overthrow their tyrants, but they can replace them only with those who will continue business as usual with Israel and the West, then we are killing all faith in democracy in the Arab and wider Muslim world. And what will be the result of that? One obvious conclusion that the Arabs may draw is that democracy is a chimera, a sham, a fraud, and that there is no point in it. What could be more radicalizing, fanaticizing, extremizing than what has happened to the elected Islamist government in Egypt? If this conclusion is the one that is drawn, then we will all reap a terrible harvest because Muslims will increasingly be drawn to the Al-Qaeda, ISIS view of the world with all the terrible consequences for them and for everyone which will flow. I hope that is not the conclusion which will be drawn, that instead the struggle for freedom in Egypt and elsewhere will take a different course and take cognizance of the mistakes that President Morsi made and the mistakes made by his opponents which have helped lead to the disaster in Egypt. In the short term, we must encourage unity in Egypt against the dictatorship and for a return to democracy. Internationally, all progressive people must put aside whatever differences they have with the Egyptian Muslim Brotherhood and get behind the campaign to isolate the junta of General Sisi, to highlight its crimes, to force their governments to take a stand against Sisi's dictatorship. Over the next few months, I will be doing everything I can to build that broad alliance. I hope you will join me. Wassalamu alaikum and peace be on all of you.